the HPSP scholarship, in my opinion, is by far the absolute best scholarship to help you pay for dental school and get a very generous stipend while going through dental school. And what I mean by that is the HPSP scholarship not only covers 100% of your dental school tuition, but it also gives you a generous around $3,000 monthly stipend every month as you're going through dental school. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to Sergeant Eikhoff from the United States Air Force who recruits health professional students and helps them navigate the HPSP scholarship application so that you can better understand things like the requirements, the application process, tips and tricks, misconceptions about the scholarship or the commitment afterwards, and pretty much everything else that him and I could think about regarding what you would want to and need to know about the HPSP scholarship for the United States Air Force. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Can you start with the background of what exactly the HPSP scholarship is for the U.S. Air Force? Yeah, absolutely. So the Armed Forces HPSP or Health Profession Scholarship Program is a scholarship designed to pay for all of dental school with no cap on the tuition or location. While getting the HPSP, you will also get a stipend of approximately $2,800 a month just to kind of help out with living expenses. That's pretty amazing. Okay. And, and does pretty much like every dental school accept the HPSP scholarship? Yes. So far, I uh, haven't ran into any that did not accept it. Okay. So yeah, public school, private school, they're, they're going to accept it. Okay, great. And then um, you mentioned it covers 100% of, of tuition with no caps. And then um, that monthly stipend, which sounds extre extremely generous in terms of something like it's going to take care of people's rent and, and like other living expenses in addition to their tuition. When someone gets the HPSP scholarship with the Air Force, they're serving in the Air Force for the amount of years that they got the scholarship for, or in other words, like tuition paid for. Is that right? Correct. So it's a minimum of three year commitment or one year for every year that we sponsor for education. So if you did a four year scholarship, then you would serve four years in the Air Force as a dentist. And then when they're serving in the Air Force as a dentist, it's pretty much like the or my understanding of it is it's very similar to serving as a dentist at like a private practice. However, your employer is the Air Force instead of a private practice. And there's like some additional things that you do. Is that right? Or can you explain what that looks like as a dentist in the Air Force? Yep, absolutely. So your main focus is taking care of patients, um, running the, the clinic, the facility. You're going to be mentoring other enlisted personnel. Um, and then depending on like your rank, you could be mentoring other dentists as well. So then during dental school, what are the additional things that an HPSP scholarship recipient would have to do if there is anything? So during the summers, there is a 45 day active duty tour where you're considered on active duty, where you're receiving full pay and benefits, but there is nothing that is expected of you during that summer active duty tour. Um, the Air Force knows that Dental school is stressful enough, so we want you to take that time, just kind of relax before starting that next year. So it sounds like they're just getting extra pay during that time and, and they're just continuing on with dental school as, as normal? Yes, the, you'll be getting that pay as well as a housing allowance and then the medical insurance for you and your family. Okay, nice. And then what are the components of the HPSP process? So let's imagine I'm a pre dental and I'm thinking, I wanna do this, this sounds awesome. What's like the process? Is there a personal statement, letters of recommendation, and, and what does all that look like? So you're going to need an applicant questionnaire, which, which is just a list of a couple different questions. We don't have a personal statement. You are gonna need at least three letters of recommendations we're going to need college transcripts, your DAT scores, and then a resume. There is also a virtual interview that you'll have to do towards the end of the process. Do you have any tips for that questionnaire, which sounds like almost short answer responses? Is that is that right? Yes. So when reading the questions, make sure you're understanding what they are looking for and make sure that your answer to that question matches with what they are looking for. Okay. So if there's like a question about like integrity, make sure you're showing integrity, that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. And and how many questions are there typically in that question? Is it like five, 10, 20? Uh, there's five questions. The, the hard part of the questionnaire is that it cannot be longer than two pages. That's usually the, the biggest complaint I get. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So you got to be concise and convey your points well. Okay. And then Absolutely. letters of recommendation, you mentioned th that there, you must get at least three 
two questions for you. One, is there a maximum on letters of recommendation that an applicant can put into the application? And two, are there like recommended best people to get a letter of recommendation from? So we can only submit three letters of recommendations, but I always tell people to ask for at least five. A lot of the times we're like towards the end of the year and towards the end of the application process. And sometimes we'll get a letter of recommendation that just does not fit in your package. And I don't want to put it there, but we might not have time to request another one. So I always tell people early on request at least five, just in case we get one that doesn't look so great. So we can kind of toss that one to the side. And then as far as who they come from, that is very important. So if you know any air force army or Navy dentist, that looks great. Um, if not a civilian dentist or any like high ranking individual in the military that can write a re letter of recommendation, uh, make sure that you know this person well, and they can actually tell a story about you versus just saying, yes, great individual, got good grades. You know, that's all stuff that we can see in your transcript and your resume. So tell us something that we don't already know. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. And then what about that virtual interview? What does that look like? Um, who's it usually with? So the interview is towards the end of the process. It is with one of our dental consultants, which is one of the AEGD residency uh, instructors. It's a pretty laid back interview from what I have heard. And they're mainly gonna be asking questions about like what you know about the Air Force. Um, they wanna know how much research you've done instead of just, oh, I wanna apply for this for the money. They wanna see like what you know about the Air Force. They might ask you questions about the PT test, about the residency, just general questions about being a dentist in the Air Force. Okay. Are there citizenship requirements to be able to apply? For example, there's a lot of international students or even like permanent residents, green card holders who apply to dental school. Do you have to be like a US citizen to apply for the HPSP scholarship? Yes, you do. So to be an officer in the military, you have to be a US citizen, you cannot be a green card holder or even a dual citizen. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then going back to the, the HPSP scholarship application process, are there certain things that you've seen with successful applicants who've ended up actually getting the scholarship? Yeah. So a lot of the applicants have a high GPA, high DAT. They usually have so, some sort of volunteer experience or involved with like sports clubs or other like pre-dental societies. So having leadership, um, those are big important things because you're going to be an officer in the Air Force as well as a dentist. So you will be expected to lead and mentor others. Okay. So leadership's a big one. What about typical GPA or DAT that you see in terms of getting the scholarship? Yeah. So average selects have around a 3.75 GPA and a 21.9 on the DAT. Okay. So essentially the equivalent of, of a 460 on a three digit DAT scale. Yep. Okay. For applicants who have below that, have you seen people at like a three, five and like a 20, get it, get the scholarship or not really? Yes, absolutely. So those are just the averages over the four year, three year and two year scholarship. What advice would you give to a pre dental who is considering applying for the HBSP scholarship? Reach out right now. Don't do your research on the internet first. There's a lot of outdated information online. And a lot of people aren't aware of the timeline for this process. It can take a minimum of six months. So it essentially sounds like reach out the sooner, the better. And in terms of the exact timeline, I mean, is there an ideal timeline in terms of, okay, when you apply to dental school, that's essentially when you should reach out or maybe even a little bit before or a little bit after. So after you take the DATs, when you should be reaching out to a recruiter, a lot of people get super busy during the dental school application timeline. And I want to make sure that we're able to get our paperwork knocked out and get your MEPS physical completed because that can be a big hang up in the process. Okay. Got it. And then any words of wisdom to stand out as an HPSP scholarship applicant, whether it's in the questionnaire with like the short essay responses during an interview, I would say get involved with different clubs and explore as many leadership opportunities as possible. If you have a high GPA DAT, that is a majority of our applicants. So what is going to make you stand out from the rest? Okay. So it sounds very similar to like the dental school application process where it's like GPA and DAT are great. They're going to help open doors. But at the end of the day, we need more than that. As in, we need the extracurriculars. We need a really compelling responses to those questions. Am I hearing that right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. They need to be the full package. The full package. Yes. Okay. Awesome. 
And are there any insights you have having done this that you'd consider valuable for applicants to know or that you'd want to share? A lot of people wait till they receive their letter of acceptance before reaching out to us. And if you do that, then it is too late. Uh, those letter of acceptances aren't going out until December, and that only gives us two months to work on your package, which is not possible. For the four-year scholarship, you do not need a letter of acceptance to apply. So please keep that in mind when reaching out to us. What about the three years? Is that, hey, I've already been accepted or I'm, I'm just starting dental school and then they apply for that? Yes. Yeah, so you will need that letter of acceptance and be in that first year of dental school when applying for the HPSB for the three year. Okay, cool. And then if, if someone applies for the four year and they're rejected, they can then apply for the three year or the two year. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. The only thing that we'll need to do at that point is just update your letters of recommendations, review your re resume, review the questionnaire just to see if we can make that package a little bit stronger. But your MEPS physical is good for two years, so you shouldn't have to re do MEPS. Okay, very cool. What is like the right fit factor for applying to the Air Force's HPSP scholarship? So we want students that want to serve in the Air Force. If you're applying just for the money and don't know anything about the Air Force and you're not willing to learn, big thing is not willing to learn, of what is expected of you in the Air Force, and this might not be the best fit for you. Okay, that makes sense. What are some of like the big misconceptions that some people have when they approach you or that you just heard maybe through the grapevine even in terms of misconceptions about the Air Force's HPSP scholarship or just the HPSP scholarship in general? So a lot of people say that they heard that the Air Force doesn't have a whole lot of scholarships or it's too competitive, so they're not even gonna bother to apply. Uh, definitely still apply. Uh, you can also apply for other branches at the same time. Um, but we do have lots of scholarships available depending on the year, which will vary greatly. And, and my understanding is that the amount of scholarships can change from year to year. But generally speaking, is there like a certain number of four-year scholarships that the Air Force offers? And are there three-year scholarships as well? And if so, like, what, is, what does that look like in terms of how many of those are typically offered? So we have a four-year, a three-year, and a two-year scholarship. I've tried to do the numbers to find out like what's a good average, but it varies so much. Um, for example, last year we had 30 scholarships for the four-year uh, scholarship, and then we had 36 scholarships for the three-year. What's one other misconception that, that you sometimes hear about the HPSB scholarship or Air Force scholarship specifically? A lot of people think that our dentists are going to be deployed a lot and they're going to be in hostile areas. Um, the Air Force is training you to be a dentist and that's what we want you to do. If we're having you do something other than that, then really like we just kind of like wasted that that money. Um, so, yes, you can deploy as a dentist in the Air Force, but a majority of them are going to be doing like humanitarian missions. And they're going through dental school. It sounds like there's not too much. Um, that the Air Force is essentially demanding in terms of responsibilities or things to do. When they show up to class, they are not in military uniform. You essentially go through dental school in class, essentially living life as a civilian. Is that correct? Correct. You're not wearing a uniform. You're not expected to show up to any formations or do any like physical activities. Your number one priority is to focus on your studies to ensure that you are passing dental school. Yeah. Okay. What does residency look like with being an HPSP scholarship recipient with the Air Force? Is there like a mandatory one year residency? Can like a dental student who has the HPSP scholarship apply to residency programs like oral surgery, orthodontics, pediatrics, that kind of thing? What does that look like? So we have the AEGD-1 residency, which is a 52 week residency with the Air Force. The purpose of this residency is to make you a more well-rounded dentist, and it's gonna introduce you to other specialties as well, just to kind of gauge your interest. It is a mandatory to apply for the AEGD-1, and you will do that between D3 and D4. Um, unfortunately, the AEGD-1 does not count towards service commitment. Um, if you want to specialize, we do have other specialties as well with military or civilian residencies. So for example, pediatrics, we will send people to a civilian residency. Okay, very cool. If someone wanted to apply to what's called pediatric residency or orthodontics, oral surgery, they wouldn't need to do the AEGD one year residency and then go on to the next residency. They would just go straight into like pediatric residency. Is that correct? So it's a little bit tricky. So while applying for the AEGD one residency, you also have the option to apply for five different specialties. 
if you are accepted to one of those specialties, you do not have to go to the AEGD-1 and you will go straight into that residency after completing dental school. If you do not get that opportunity, then you will have to wait a minimum of two years before applying for one of the other specialties. And for our specialty selection rates, they are pretty high compared to uh, civilians. Okay, nice. And, and just to make it clear, there are, it sounds like both Air Force or military residencies and then the potential to also go into a civilian residency at like a regular university, is that right? Correct. Okay, very cool. So you mentioned that there are five different residencies that Air Force HPSP recipients can apply to. What five residency programs are those? We have the AEGD2, which is a two-year residency for being a comprehensive dentist. We have oral surgery, prosthodontics, perio, and oral facial pain. So yeah, okay. So then with pediatrics, orthodontics, it would be going into a typical college or university's ortho or peds program. Correct. Are, is there like a hot spot for where we have a lot of Air Force bases where dentists who are Air Force dentists go to like practice or is it kind of like all over the place, um, both in the U.S. and internationally? General dentists entering after HPSB usually go to one of the 10 AEGD bases just because they're large and they can support that. And plus, you'll have access to mentors and other specialties and if you're interested in that. Do you happen to know where those 10 are? The 10 AEGD Air Force bases are in Maryland, Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi, Virginia, Nevada, Nebraska, California, Colorado, and Ohio. And then after that, are there popular places or certain areas where Air Force dentists typically will end up or practice? So the bases that you'll be stationed at is going to vary greatly. Ultimately, it's up to the needs of the Air Force, so you must be willing to relocate if you're doing the HPSB. Um, as far as hot spots, it really varies from person to person. I've had some people that might say, hey, I really want to go to New Mexico, and other people that say that is last on my list. So you never know what the assignment locations could play out as. That makes sense, yeah. Do HPSP Air Force dentists get to almost like rank or preference certain areas or bases? So you will fill out an assignment preference sheet where you're listing stateside bases and overseas locations. Uh, we have a lot of Air Force bases overseas and stateside, and then you can also be attached to like a joint base with the Army or the Navy. Okay, that makes sense. So then an, an HPSP recipient goes to dental school debt-free, and then after the, the service commitment is over, they can choose to continue working as an Air Force dentist or go into the private sector as like a private practice dentist, is that right? Once you've completed your HPSP active duty service commitment, you can voluntarily separate from the Air Force and trans transition to the private practice or other organization. Uh, you just have to submit your separation request six months in advance to their desired separation date. Okay, and, and I imagine that Air Force dentists with what you learned beyond practicing dentistry and the, I would imagine, very diverse group of patients and all sorts of situations, you probably also have very good leadership skills and things like that, being an officer in the Air Force to transition into something like leading a dental team in private practice and things like that. In terms of the next step, how does a pre-dental find the right person to get in touch with? Should they reach out to you if they're interested about this? Um, is there a way to do that in terms of contact info? Is there a different way that they should find the, the right person to contact? What's the situation there? So the best way to do it is to go to the Air Force website and click on the Find a Recruiter tab. You will enter your zip code you will select you're interested in active duty Air Force, and then there'll be a couple different recruiters listed. Make sure you are contacting the healthcare recruiter. Uh, just send them some information on what you're looking for, and they will connect you with that closest dental recruiter. One thing that I like to add is that, yes, you can apply to multiple branches at the same time. Please just be transparent with your recruiters because there's sometimes we can work together with your recruiter just to make sure that your process is flowing smoothly. That makes sense and, and very good to know. Sergeant Eikhoff, it was uh, an absolute pleasure having you today. And thank you so much for explaining all these different details. And of course, thank you for your service as well. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.